Arizona wide receiver Tedero and McMillan has the best hands in college football. He finished ninth last season in targets with 132, a list that also has Romo Dunze up there. He only had two drops. That was the least amount among the top 10 in targets. Let's talk about what makes him such a fantastic hands catching receiver and everything else about why he's one of the best receivers in the 2025 class. When you have a guy who's 6'5", 212 pounds, you see listed there, you can do anything with him. Line him up on the outside, you get a matchup problem inside outside and here you see he is in the slot against a smaller nickel db a little bit of a hesitation release he's going to stop wait and see what that db does he's going to get one step to the outside and that's when you see mcmillan break on the inside route to the slant okay so he's going to take it up inside get a little bit vertical try and make that db think that he can go upfield and then get that two-way go and then he's going to break to the middle of the field and that's where you see him use that big body of his shrugs off the DB with his outside shoulder, gets two hands on the football, comes down with it. Use your hands, use your bigger body, and get that football, come in with it. You know you're going to get a little bit of press here, but what he does with that release through the stem, his pacing, it's all well and good. And even though that DB does a really nice job of recovering two hands, on the football, McMillan comes down with it. I loved this matchup. It was really fun to watch these two go at it. But this is where he separates himself from the bigger guys that can maybe only play in the slot. With outside, you're going to get some press coverage. And while I do think that physicality can disrupt his timing, what he does is understand that he can use a very nuanced shoulder dip to get out of the way. Awareness and the shoulder dip from the press coverage nuanced is all there for McMillan to not only be an effective player on the outside, but to truly have a w as well-rounded game as we've seen for a 6'5 receiver. So, like I said, that shoulder dip, nice job here, identifying that the press is coming. But then we're going to see him get open over the middle of the field. This is where the awareness comes in. You have this little curl, and then the in route behind it, the defense is going to collapse on this, making the middle of the field wide open for McMillan. You're going to get this safety come downhill, as well as the linebacker identifying he's catching this. And the awareness factor for McMillan is off the charts. He knows he's coming to this area of the field. And he does not want to get hit. He doesn't want to take those big hits. Nobody wants to take those big hits. Being able to get your body out of the way when you see a big hit coming, all of that awareness plays into it. So really nice job. You see the hips get down. He stops his feet. That deceleration is there. He already has his eyes on the safety coming in, spins out of the big hit, goes down. But avoiding those big hits, making sure they don't add up, because safeties still want to level you if you come open over the middle of the field, this is where he can make a lot of money in the NFL, being a guy who just attacks over the middle of the field. And speaking of the middle of the field, zone feel for uh, Teratoa McMillan is next level. He has everything set up for him. You see here, now he's back in the slot. This time we go five wide. Arizona is going to run crossers, intermediate leveling crossers here with uh, Jacob Cowing and Teratoa McMillan. But what I loved about this is that he understands all the different ways to be able to create, you know, create yards after the catch and get into space here all the way. He doesn't take it all the way for a touchdown because he doesn't have that top end speed to really pull away. But watch what he does here. So he's breaking open over the middle of the field. Defense is going to end up triangulating this, where you have him catching the football right in the middle of this triangle. And instead of just taking it all the way through over the middle of the field, he's going to angle back towards the football, catch it, and then get all the way underneath the defense and create a big play. That's just way next level understanding, using great eyes, and football IQ to create something out of what probably should have been nothing in terms of having the middle of the field clogged with three or four defensive players. Just a really great job of seeing that out, playing it through, and then getting into open field for a big play. That's what you want from a receiver that can absolutely get, get gash defenses over the middle and everywhere 
in the uh, everywhere on the field. So you have all of that at this on display. The the willingness to play in the slot body up some smaller players, but also go over the middle of the field, knows how to get rid of those big hits in the game and then just create big plays. Put him down in the red zone. Let the big man work. That's what we want to see from these tall receivers. Showcase you can be a legitimate red zone threat. And not only are we talking about the zone feel, but he has all of the ball skills and the hand-eye coordination to make things happen. But on top of it, the real cherry on top is timing execution with your timing creates touchdowns it just does when you are this big and you have great timing and great pacing which he does you're going to create lots of touchdowns so he's going to give a little jab step to the inside slow release just walking up to the db go inside for the slant hit that fade and then you see the acceleration through that route here as he stacks the DB, you're going to notice he, he just looks immediately for the football. He's about to stack him. His eyes go right to that quarterback. And now that DB is in trouble. He can't catch up immediately, so he's not looking for the football. He's busy in trail trying to catch back up to the receiver. And this is what he knows. This is what McMillan sees. Does a great job just taking him upfield because he knows he's in a recovery mode, he, the DB needs to catch back up. So T times it perfectly, sends him upfield, doesn't push off, and then boom, we get two hands, two feet, and it's a touchdown. Incredible timing. That's exactly what you want to see from those big receivers in the red zone. I mentioned it earlier. I do think that he's got a little bit of a, a little bit of work to do at the top of his routes with physicality, and I think that he could really benefit from being more physical at the top of his routes. Here, he lets that little, smaller guy into his chest at the top of his route. Now, he's just going to continue to work through the route, and he gets open anyway. But what I want from him to see a little bit more of, more consistently, is you're, again, releasing inside, and then you're going to that out route, okay? When you get physically met up in your chest, hands, swipe swim you see him coming towards you he's getting closer this db right here is going to close on him and get his hands in his chest okay swipe him away swim over you are big you've got long reach you can get over him so right here what i want to see him do right here that jab step to the outside and then swim over boom you should be wide open if you swim over that but hand usage is still not there it's not all the way for him it's not as consistent and then even a little bit get we see guys like Keon Coleman, who just got drafted by the Bills, uh, J Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, those guys use physicality at the top of their route to create separation. DeAndre Hopkins is also very good at this. Use that, just a little bit of an extension. You don't have to extend all the way. It's a little bit. You're, you're generating momentum, speed. Get to the top of the route, and instead of letting that DB into your chest, instead of letting him get to you, you use his movement and your momentum and move him out of the way for you. And then you're wide open. And he Again, he works through this and does a fantastic job of efforting after to get a first down. But I just want to see a little bit more hand usage and real physicality this season to really round out his game at the top of routes where... And you know, at times you're going to find that he's not the fastest and he's not the quickest in and out of breaks. But at the end of the day, he's big. He can use some of those skills and some of those natural born gifts that he's got to his advantage. And again, when we're seeing a guy as a deep threat on the outside against man on man coverage, you vary the releases a little bit. Just a, this is just a regular boring. I'm just going to the outside. I see him. He's got inside leverage, but he's not the fastest guy in the world. The top speed isn't there. So in order to make this defensive back not be right in my hip pocket and trail where he can turn around and locate that football, I need to give a little bit of something with the release here, whether it's a dime, whether it's a hesitation, whether it's a jab step, a little more pacing here. At the end of the day, for McMillan, it's more about consistency. This is a good job by number five, the DB, to stay in that pocket there, you know, get the hand on the shoulder. You did see the shoulder dip there, so we like to see that. A little bit of hand usage from him to kind of swipe that hand away. But at the end of the day, the top speed for McMillan is not elite level. So you have to have a little bit more in the bag there with the release to create separation. Guys like Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs are so good at that. If you go watch the receiver uh, documentary on Netflix, Devontae Adams talks about how releases create 
separation and, and continue to make him, you want to get that DB's, you want to get in his head a little bit. So I think that that's something that McMillan does need to work on. But at the end of the day, the skill set that he has and that he provides an offense is very unique. We talked a little bit about his zone feel and the way that he identifies space. And Arizona used that very well. Now, he was the number two, quote-unquote, to Jacob Cowling last year. He was used on a lot of decoy routes, but they started to get him more involved later in the season. And I like just a wide receiver screen. Just get him the football. Let him see what he can do because we talked about the awareness as well. So here, he's got pretty good change of direction. So he's going to, again, attack to the outside here, but then he's going to come back up underneath because, one, he knows that those blockers are coming for him to be able to help him out. And then he's able to get into space and create some yards after the catch. So you can use his fluidness because he's a very fluid mover. It's just not as consistent in his routes as you'd like it to be at times. You know, he's 6'5". He can get a little high-hipped, and that's okay. We, we, we understand that. There's a lot of yards after catch potential. It's more about the inefficiencies and when he can't necessarily burst past guys and create those back-breaking touchdowns that you see some of the shorter guys in the NFL do. But... I mean, talk about his route potential. You see him at the top of your screen right here. And this is just a disgusting whip route for a touchdown from a 6'5 guy. So there's a lot of potential with his route running, his yards after catch. All the, the athletic ability is there. This is just a really nice job of hip sinking, boom, and then back out driving. When he drives through, he's selling vertical, and he's really doing a good job of selling the route. He can get into those breaks and break back out for either touchdowns or big plays and make those routes really count. So what I want to see from him is a little bit of improvement with the hand usage and the routes and the, and the releases. All that nuanced stuff is all there for him. It's just a little bit inconsistent. So Teratola McMillan, so good, really big-bodied receiver who has the skills of those big bodies down the field with timing and ball production and the, the, the ball skills. But he also has legitimate smooth moves and the ability to run routes at a different level than some guys you see this size. Our own Keith Sanchez has a written breakdown of Teratola McMillan, so you guys can head on over to our website, check that out, and compare and contrast how we both feel. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of one of the best receivers in college football. Football. Look for more coming here on the TDN YouTube page. Hit that like and the sub on the way out the door, and I'll see you guys next time.